In this video, I want to talk briefly about two general types of research that we can do. This is mentioned in this chapter of the textbook. Uh, one of them is called applied, applied research. And the other is called basic research. And so in applied research, this is exactly what it sounds like. We are doing research and because we have some specific use that we are intending to apply that to. We want to find something out, but we're not trying to find it out to satisfy our, to satisfy our curiosity or to understand things better. Yes, we want to understand things better, but it's so that we can apply that understanding to do something of practical use, to solve a problem. So uh, the way I'll put this is that this is applied research is research that is specifically intended to solve to solve a problem or I'll say do something of practical use. So um, an example off the top of my head would be you are a health psychologist and you want to help people eat better so that they, you know, the, the problem is that we have high rates of, say, cardiovascular disease. People are dying from heart attacks, which can be prevented if they, uh, to a large extent, if they eat better and have a healthy lifestyle, get enough exercise and so on. So you want to change their behavior and maybe you're doing some research to try to figure out how to best do that. So you want to understand maybe how to uh, give people a message that will convince them to eat healthier foods. Now in doing that, you're, you're, understand, you're going to come to a better understanding of how the human mind works and how, you know, how it works in the, in the sense of uh, being able to convince them with a particular message about what they should be doing. So you're coming to understand human behavior better, but you're doing it for the purposes specifically of getting them to eat better. So you're trying to solve a problem. In contrast, basic research is on the opposite end of the spectrum. That's research where we're, we're just, we're not particularly concerned with any particular problem. We may not even have any practical use for the knowledge that we're hoping to get out of the, of the research. We're just wanting to understand. So uh, to, to learn something more about the world. So basic research is research that is meant to learn or understand. Um, and it has no obvious or immediate practical use. An example of this might be, say, uh, when Einstein in the early 1900s was doing all this research in physics trying to understand better how the physical world works, he didn't, as far as I know at least, uh, necessarily have any particular practical application in mind for what he was trying to discover. He was just trying to understand better how things work. So that's the idea behind basic research. We're, we're just doing it uh, to further our understanding. Now, Something that's really important to understand here is that, yeah, some studies are very clearly applied research and others are very clearly basic research, but some are in between. And, uh, you know, we can learn a lot when doing applied research. We can really greatly improve our understanding. And sometimes when doing basic research that without even intending to, we learn something that down the line leads to uh, a all kinds of applications, all kinds of things we can do with that knowledge that we didn't think of. So basic research will often get criticized for not being of any practical use. Uh, and that is sometimes a valid criticism. Sometimes researchers do sort of get lost in this super theoretical world uh, where they're, yeah, they're coming to understand something, but really the thing is so incredibly uh, abstract or unimportant or disconnected from from real life that you could argue it, it might be a waste of money. But even when that seems to be the case, often those studies actually down the line lead to really useful stuff. So for example, going back to Einstein, some of his 
work that he did in the early part of the 1900s that was purely just basic research, at least it's, and it seemed to have no particular practical applications, within a few decades, we were realizing we could use these concepts. We were developing things like laser technology, uh, came out of, uh, partly out of some of Einstein's ideas. So, and, the, and that was, you know, obviously we use laser technology for all kinds of things, uh, for, for laser uh, eye surgery or for uh, DVDs, for example, uh, use laser technology. So it's very often the case that we have something that we discover in basic research that doesn't have any immediate applications, but down the line turns out to lead to all kinds of useful stuff that we can use uh, to solve real world problems.